At the heart of it all are reflections on what religious faith is all about and how faith changes. Faith is a very personal thing, obviously it involves a personal commitment. Now most people of faith have a tradition out of which they work. They try and understand their experience in those terms. Westminster Interfaith Pilgrimage is not something that we as a group have organised, it's something that's happened. What I think we discover when the Hindus and the Buddhists and the Muslims actually come together is that there are points of overlap and you can explore those and they're very interesting. And then when people get confident of overlap, you know, there's human beings who believe different things, there are points where we can agree, there are points where we don't agree, where there's difference. And those in many ways are the more difficult things to explore, but ultimately the more interesting. And I must say, I had a fit when I walked in there and saw that guru using, you know, the wax model. Um, but I think you'll probably find it's within you somewhere where you really can't get to grips with that on stuff. A superficial level, yeah. I think. And I think I'd be lying if I said, oh, now I totally understand. Thank you very much for this enlightenment. But I really wasn't. <laughs> we probably aren't going to fully understand mm. another person's yeah. traditions, yes. and that's okay. That's, yes. And two, there are going to be sticking points and points of real acute controversy and disagreement, and that's also okay. What we've been finding on our course is that there's so much more to these relationships than just pushing for the thing which is the problem and then sticking at it. Obviously it's innovative and we're trying new things and flying kites, but it builds out of other things. For example, the, uh, in schools, uh, in religious education within schools, children learn about and from religious traditions. And so we thought, well, let's play with those prepositions a bit more. And so not only about and from, but with. Faith together, people in faith together are actually doing this. They're questioning not only their own faith, but other people's faith. That it was actually written down by humans, ultimately. Mm -hmm. They think it's the word of God, and for somehow I just picture them thinking the book just dropped from the sky. I mean, the, the thing is, that's all started the clearly not knowing yeah. a great deal about each other, and not knowing a great deal about you know, the skills of interfaith engagement, and then gradually um, learning more about what sort of skills you need, and learning more about the different faith traditions themselves. Oh, I think it's quite difficult to get into somebody else's ritual and immediately start to get some sort of spiritual sustenance from it. And yet, the moment he started using words which come out of our liturgical tradition, then you're pulled in very, very fast. Living in Dublin as a Catholic, it was like you didn't go into the Church of Ireland Church. So I stood outside St. Patrick's Cathedral, Christ Church, going to school, never entered until later on I came back and we could go in and visit these places. I'd never entered, never set foot. There was a Jewish synagogue near my grandparents. I never entered my head to even visit them. Whereas now I just feel so privileged to be able to visit different places of worship and respect what goes on there. These are the eight selected hymns from the Vedas. Now our denomination is different from the other Hindu denominations. Nothing is mine. It is all his God, because he is the creator, therefore he is the rightful master. Remember in the first five, six months uh, where we had speakers coming in, and I just felt they were arming us with the tools and how you participate in dialogue. But I always looked around in the room 
to um, the participants of Faith Together. And they weren't putting a barrier up, but everybody was very nice and sweet and we shared a certain degree of formalities. That all changed the minute we started coming to Southall. Well, the programme was across five terms and um, in the main we were based in two places. Either we were at Heathrop College in the lecture room or else we were out and about. And Conversations was uh, built more about visits, meeting people in their own places of worship and also in their own homes and, and going cold calling almost, like pre-arranged, but for the participants it was, they didn't quite know what they were going into, so this was stepping over the threshold. when you preserve something in your mind, to their disciples. Yeah. I suppose so. <laughs> I think actually in, in the Ram Temple, the other one, the Ram Mandir down the road, it's the other way around. Maybe there is some... Lord Shiva is one of the members of Hindu Trinity. As in Christianity, we have got Hindu Trinity as well. While it, it does feel foreign to me, you know, when, when if we visit a Hindu temple to see all the different statues and, and they, they all have their rituals and all. But I, I respect that and they must find our ritual very foreign, very strange to see this naked man on a cross. <laughs> I'm a Buddhist, so this is familiar to me in many ways. Just see the um, yeah, yeah. Where you, can, you, can, you can just oh, see, you can just see, see the outer. But what does that stand for in his service? No, IHS. And what I think we've managed to prove in two years, and we've had a generous amount of time, is that given the right environment and given enough time, people can both learn about themselves and from each other. I think time is a very, very crucial factor Absolutely. in Faith Together because, um, I mean, we've been talking for the past couple of weeks about what we can take away from this and dealing with pertinent issues, especially in Southall. And the one thing that's always played upon my mind is that with time, we've gone comfortable with one another. A sandwich some type lunch. When I worked in the prison for 19 years, the major cause to criminality and to mental illnesses is the disintegration of the family. That's the major cause. You found that your faith has yes. rooted oh, you and nourished you. Absolutely, yeah. I think the, the third term was in many ways the most interesting one because they'd had the summer to work in groups and what we had was a group of three or four of our participants working on another faith. Now, what that did, apart from teaching them all a little bit, a little bit about Sikhism or Hinduism, got them working together, and that was actually rather important. And I don't think, I certainly didn't realise in advance that this is what it would actually happen. Four of them, you know, from different faith traditions, studying another one because they had to present it was really quite a powerful um, stimulus to learning. I'm converted. I'm converted now. <laughs> having, having first, through the structure of the course, broken into small groups and got to know at a sort of four, two, three, four, five person level that we had the possibility of speaking with one another. We then in the second year divided into small groups to engage in a task together and again that was a question of, of sharing. In these um, group discussions and these presentations that we did have, I think um, it wasn't forced. It just felt as though within that time we earned the trust of one another that we could actually work together and actually present a case for interfaith dialogue. This is how far we've come.
came to the course, I think I had a general openness to, to other traditions, but a real ignorance. And uh, it's in learn listening and in conversation and dialogue that really I've come to, my eyes have been opened as to the breadth and the depth of the, uh, the treasures that different traditions hold. You don't solve all the problems, you don't come up with an answer. But at least you've got a confidence in yourself and a confidence in other people which says, all right, that's the way it is. We can, we can live with this. The people who have been journeying on this uh, pathway say that they've had to move on within their own faith appreciation, their appreciation of what their own faith actually means. Through learning other faith traditions, I can practice my faith in a better manner. How can I really understand and truly understand who I am if I don't understand my background? And Islam tells me, going back to what you were saying, talk to the people of the book, and those people of the book are the Christians and Jews. If I don't know my cousins in faith, or my sisters and brothers in faith, how can I have a dialogue with them? So much about this is learning about ourselves rather than learning about something different. What the course does is get you to get under your own skin of your own faith tradition and find out things about it which astonish you, which shock you, which worry you, which challenge you.